Hello, welcome to episode 194 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 20th of January. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making since the last time I've podcasted. So today I have some knitting and I'm going to go through a few of the things that I achieved off last year's Make Nine sewing list, which is sort of non-dressmaking sewing, and the things I achieved off that list anyway. I didn't do too bad, I did five out of nine, so there we go. <laughs> I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. I have a couple of confessions, oh dear. <laughs> And I also have some new things going up in my shop, including some opal yarn. So stay tuned for that if you want to see the new colourways. And I also have a little appearance of my little Jensen wearing a handmade outfit at the very end of the podcast. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? So I have a hat that Adam's mum, Liz, has knitted. And it has the most beautiful stitch texture on the side and a twisted rib bottom. And it's just quite a slouchy hat, which I love on me. I think that's the sort of... I don't really suit hats, but that's the sort of style that sort of suits me the best. Um, hopefully... I can get it on and looking decent in the camera <laughs> so that's what it looks like on me but it's got some beautiful stitches it's like a, a sort of a star shape stitch and it's going to be nice and cozy for the winter and I thought it would go really nice with the cowl that she'd knitted which I've already showed you this is the traveler's cowl and I will leave a link to this in the description bar down below um but I haven't even told you the title of the hat that I'm wearing so this is the Hanagiku, really bad pronunciation, maybe Hanagiku hat <laughs> and it's by 87 knit and it's a free download so I will leave a link to this from the Ravelry page um, but I really like the slouchiness of it because I do like a slouchy hat and I think that looks okay actually considering I don't really suit hats um, but I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out and with the cowl as well I shall put it on to show you what it looks like together um, and there we go. So the cowl itself is supposed to be knitted in a sport weight yarn, but I got Liz to knit it in a DK weight because sport is sort of between a DK and four ply. So I thought that that would be close enough. Since it's a cowl, it doesn't actually 100% matter the gauge. Um, so it's probably a little bit wider than it would be um, if it was knitted in a sport. But I thought that'd be a nice matching set. Ta-da! <laughs> So there we go, that is the first make. I'm going to leave it on, be a bit cosy today. It is very cold outside. It's about three degrees Celsius, I think, um, today. So a little bit chilly. So now moving on to my work in progress. So this cardigan was on my Make 9 and I went through my Make 9 list last week. Um, and as you can see, I haven't done an awful lot because I've had a very busy week sorting out all of the yarn clubs that were ordered and they needed to be shipped. So they went a couple of days late, I'm afraid, but I haven't had an awful lot of time to knit on this. But this is the Wishes Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. And it's a really interesting construction, actually. So I knitted the start of the sleeve, or the shoulder, and the back first, and then you had to pick up stitches along this line here. And then I'm knitting sort of the back and the both sides, backwards and forwards, after a few increases which has given an interesting shape so this pattern flutes out at the bust so it'll be plenty big enough for my bigger bust even though i've chosen to choose the size according to my upper bust measurement which is good and this yarn is a yarn i've dyed myself and it is a sort of gray base but i've dyed it with a sort of a mustardy color which comes out with this kind of an ochre sort of shade which i really like and i think that'll go with lots of dresses i think um, so that's how far I've got on that, which is an appalling amount of progress from knitting. Um, but I'm hoping now that I've got all the clubs shipped out and I'm up to date with all my bag making orders, I will be able to actually spend some evenings knitting on this cardigan. So hopefully I'll have a bit more to show you next week. So that is all the knitting I've got to show you this week, but I do have my sort of Make 9 sewing achievements from last year's Make 9 list. And this is just sort of non-dressmaking, all the other sort of sewing things 
club together in one sort of make nine goals list. So first of all on my list was my sewing machine covers and I really wanted to make a really nice quilted covers for all my machines and I achieved this which was really good because I've got covers that I've made for my overlocker and my cover stitch, my embroidery machine here but I also made one for my printer because I've got my printer in this room now. And I'm really pleased I made those because it just makes the room look a lot less busy. I'll grab it and show you. So this is one of the covers that I'd made and they're pretty much all the same. I tried to use the same sort of style so that they work together well. So I did some straight line quilting on this gorgeous turquoisey fabric which I'm really pleased about. So I just did the straight line quilting all sides. I used the plastic supple cover as a pattern to make this so I can get the sides, the right side, and then I've just lined it with some calico just to make it a little bit stiffer so that it holds its shape slightly better. So they all look pretty much like that, but this is one of the bigger ones. Um, and I'm so pleased that I got those sort of finished. It wasn't a very exciting project to do multiple covers, all the same sort of straight stitch quilting, but I really like the way it looks. But there we go, I'll pop it back on. So there we go, that's one of my Make Nine sewing from last year done. The next thing I wanted to finish off were living room cushions, which were these, and I'd woven some panels of clasped weft weaving. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? So I would made a panel of weaving where the warp is all a cream color, and I've got two weft yarns, and you basically wind them round each other, but change the point where they meet so that you get this lovely random pattern which I'm really pleased about. So I've made two cushions like this and then I made a shorter um, rectangle one to go in our lounge. I used some turquoise piping to go on there and I just backed it in a grey fabric because that's the colours that fit in with our lounge so I finished that off and I'm really pleased with how these feel actually and it's really nice to have some cushions that are actually not only sewn by me but also woven by me as well so I'm really pleased about that so that's one thing off the list and the next thing on my list was my Luna Lapin coat so this coat I've been meaning to make for ages I'd made Luna a few years ago and it's from a book called Luna Lapin and I will leave a link to the book in the description bar down below but I think I picked mine up from a shop called The Works which was on sale for about five pounds which was brilliant so you might be able to find one at one of the cheaper book shops because it's been out quite a long time and I wanted to make a coat for her because it's absolutely gorgeous. I loved making all the tiny little buttonholes, they work as well. Um, and the little cuffs, really pretty little coat. And I really enjoyed making it. And it's even got um, some binding that finishes off the inside of the coat. And I think she looks really lovely. So her, the cuffs of her dress stick out at the edges of her coat, which I think is lovely too. So that was one of the make nine. I'll show her in full because she's got a little boots on that I also made as well. Because I did make small shoes for her before, but because she'd got a coat, I had to make the boots to go with it because she'd look a bit silly going out in a really cold weather wearing tiny little shoes. So <laughs> she had to have some boots as well. So there we go. Luna is all complete with her coat. So next on the list was a bookmark. So I picked up this cross stitch kit for a bookmark from the Festival of Quilts I think a couple of years ago and I just thought right I need to get it actually done and finished so that I can actually use it and it is a Michael Powell bookmark of this gorgeous ice cream sundae so I was really pleased that I managed to finish that. I did all the coloured cross stitch and then I put off doing all the black work but actually it was really easy and quite quick to complete as well so I'm really pleased that I actually finished it and then I used the instructions that it, that it gave me um, with the kit and also it came with the felt for the back and the tassel to complete it as well so that's the finished bookmark and I'm actually quite tempted to get another one of these kits because they are really nice. I really like Michael Powell's style uh, with cross stitch patterns. So the next thing on my list was another cross stitch and it was the Country Cottage Needleworks Winter Welcome and it is completed. I am not really happy with the frame that I've put it in to be honest. I am going to reframe it at some point and I've somehow uh, managed to not centralise it properly. It's there's a little bit more gap at the top. We shall see whether I can find a nicer frame to put it in. 
Um, I remember the only thing that I changed is that I did the house in the called for hand dyed thread and it didn't show up very well so I ended up over stitching the blue of the house just to make it slightly more blue compared to the white because it was a very pale blue so you couldn't see it very well and I'll leave a link to all these um, patterns and things in the description bar down below this was a pattern that I bought separately and then I just purchased the threads um, the call for threads from I think it was Peak District Yarns something like that um, and there is some really nice little gold stitches in there to give it a little bit of sparkle um, just in the corners etc really nice sort of wintry welcome sign so I obviously need to make a summery one now so that I can have one for sort of summer and spring months and then one in the more wintry time so that is all the things I've managed to complete from my make nine sewing list last year um, although I didn't do too bad on my knitting and my dressmaking ones this one I didn't do so good so that was five items that I've showed you and there's another four items that I didn't manage to complete so I wanted to do at least three different free embroideries just to have a go and get a bit more practice in doing um, in making up my own sort of free embroidery didn't manage to do that. Um, I wanted to complete a quilt which, which I didn't actually manage to complete last year. The next thing on my list was a coffee table runner. I didn't complete that. I have actually started one um, which was a foundation pieced one which I shall show you at some point once I dig it out again. Um, but we'll see whether I dig that out this year. <laughs> and I also wanted to do a bedroom wall hanging, but I didn't manage to do that either. We shall see whether they go on to this year's make nine list. I haven't actually put pen to paper yet, but I will be hopefully getting that sorted next week. Well, I do have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. So I had a question from Becky and she was asking in terms of sock making what is my favourite type of heel construction and which do I think is better for fit? She says she's always done a heel flap and gusset method but likes the look of other types of construction. So like you Becky I do like the heel flap and gusset method. I like the way that you can just add a longer heel flap to make more room for a high instep which is really really handy and I think it's more flexible in terms of fitting a high instep but I have done a short row heel I've got a tutorial on this channel where I show you how I do a toe up sock where I add a short row heel in there and I go through exactly what I do for a, a German short row heel um, and that's what I use for self striping yarn because sometimes you don't want to interrupt that nice stripey pattern between the heel and the foot so I'll put a short row heel or maybe an afterthought heel I've also got a tutorial for that as well I'll pop a link in the description bar to both the tutorials that I'm talking about and I actually have got a top-down sock pattern and tutorials that actually tell you how I do my heel flap and gusset in case you're interested so I'll list all those tutorials in the description down below but like I said, I do like the heel flap and gusset the best because it is more versatile in terms of changing the length of the heel flap so that you can accommodate a higher instep or a very slim heel depending on who it's for. But with the short row heel, you can actually increase just before you start the short row to make a little more room for a higher instep. So you can increase the space for a higher in step by doing that increase and I talk a bit more about that in the tutorials that I've popped in the description bar down below but definitely a, a heel flap and gusset is my favourite method so I have done some other construction methods for the heel I think a netting expat has got a modification that you can do for a sort of semi heel flap in that you can use in combination with a short row heel. I haven't actually tried that one, but I have tried this one, which is the vanilla is the new black heel, where you're basically just knitting the sock from the top down and then you knit these increases and ribbed section so that you've got more space for the heel. And I really like the fit of that actually. That gives plenty of room for a high end step um, and you just have to be a bit careful actually not to make sh make your sock too wide so that it's not too wide for the instep. So if you've got a very narrow foot and a skinny heel, perhaps this 
pattern isn't this pattern for you this is similar i think to the flegal heel as well um, which is another different heel option there's endless modifications on the types of heel but i do still keep going back to the heel flap and gusset method and of course it does depend on whether you're doing your sock from the toe up or your cuff down um, as to what method you choose because the heel flap and gusset, the standard heel flap and gusset is normally constructed from the top down um, and there are methods of doing the sort of heel flap and gusset from the toe up as well. So I've got a question from Julie also about socks and this is about heel reinforcement. So she says, so the heel flap and gusset patterns quite often insist on having heel reinforcement stitches, so the slip stitches on the back of the heel, to give it a little bit of extra strength where it might rub on the back of your shoe for instance. But the short row patterns don't often suggest doing these slip stitches at all. She wonders why, because they are they obviously are subject to the same sort of pressures. I don't really know Julie to be honest but I wonder whether it's to do with fit as well I know that with a heel flap and gusset having the slip stitches on the back of the heel it fits snugly round the foot quite nicely um, so that might be one of the reasons and I wondered whether the heel flap and gusset is quite a traditional old-fashioned technique where perhaps people had a lot more wear on their socks whereas us knitters these days we've probably got quite a number of pairs of socks that we've knitted <laughs> um, so perhaps we're not so bothered about the wear of socks because we have so many pairs on rotation but the short answer is Julie I don't really know um, but I do think it does sometimes help a little bit with fit having the slip stitches on the back of the heel you can of course add slip stitches to a short row heel and I think I've heard of a couple of cases where they do use those so I think it's just a, a a case where people are perhaps a bit less bothered about durability these days I don't really know <laughs> so the next section is confessions I've been very naughty <laughs> to be honest I've been looking at these gloves for ages so normally I use the machingas um, gloves for free motion quilting so I can get a grip on the material quite nicely and they basically are a cotton glove with rubber bits on the fingers so that you can get purchase on the fabric so that you can move your quilt round when you're doing free motion quilting. I sometimes find these are a little bit hot in the summer and I'd seen that, I think it's Angela Walters that I'd seen it first. I got some of these gloves. Now I saw these and I thought I need some of these immediately when I saw Angela wearing them because they've got a whole couple of fingers missing and it just means that they're not quite as hot and I really wanted some but I looked and looked and they were really expensive I think they were coming up about £30 with postage from the US um, and I, there wasn't any UK stock lists but I saw that Cotton Patch had finally got some and they were only 16.50 plus postage so I had to get my hands on some. So they do some different designs but I picked the black lace, they do ones with flowers on and things but I thought that this one um, was the prettiest and also you can get them with the grey binding on as well so they haven't got this pink contrast detail but aren't they cute? So much better than the full gloves. And I do quite a lot of free motion quilting with the, the bags that I have in my shop. So these are absolutely ideal. And I have tested them out this week and I think that they are really good. They've got little um, like grippy spots on all over rather than just having the rubbery bits on the fingers like the machingas. That rhymes. <laughs> and they are called the Reggie's Grip um, gloves. And I will leave a link in the description bar down below. And these are really good. And I much prefer them to the machingas that I was using before. Just because they give you a little bit of air. And also they're a nice snug fit. Which is absolutely brilliant. So there is instructions to measure the tip of your, your longest finger. To where the gloves would go to. I measured up as a medium. And the mediums fit perfectly. So I do recommend the measuring instructions they work really well absolutely love these <laughs> so if you are into free motion quilting a definite must and I also wanted to show you another of my Christmas gifts that I got so this is some gorgeous yarn that I got from my friend Liz for Christmas it's a double 50 gram set and these colors are gorgeous and the yarn dyer is kernodesigns.uk 
I will pop a link in the description bar down below but I believe that she picked it up from a shop in Shrewsbury and I will leave a link to the shop in the description bar down below because I've completely forgotten the name of it now but it's called Not Slytherin so it's a Harry Potter themed yarn as well so those are lovely yarns and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make with it yet um, but aren't those colours gorgeous? really nice and it's a high twist merino as well and it's 420 meters per 100 grams so that will become something lovely i'm sure so that is all the confessions that i got for you this week i do have some more christmas gifts to show you but i'm spreading them over the year so it doesn't look so bad <laughs> I do have a little shop update section now and then at the very end of the podcast i've got a little clip of jensen in another handmade outfit this time sewing so i've basically picked all my favorites that i've seen from the wholesaler so first of all from the black dragon 2 fantasy island range i've got this gorgeous mild colorway and this one's called raging sea of clouds and isn't that gorgeous um, i will pop a picture on the screen of what the finished sock looks like so you can see it better but isn't that lovely so there's that one and i've also got the um this turquoise and grey version of the opal and this is the range the autumn melody range in the flying kites colorway isn't that beautiful there is a picture on the band that shows you what it looks like but i will pop a picture on the screen of what it looks like in the finished sock because it's nice to see how the stripes sort of knit up but those two are really beautiful but there we go those two will be in the shop on friday at 7 p.m and the shop shop update this week and i've also already restocked these blossom chart keepers this is the large size but i've got large and small in stock now because they went out of stock um a little while ago but they're now back in stock and i've also restocked some of the circular needle holders from clover as well so there we go that's for the shop update and I've got a little appearance from my little Jensen in a new hand-sewn garment now. So this week's outfit are some hand-sewn dungarees. And this is a pattern by Sew Over It and it's called the Dandelion Dungarees. They are double-sided so you can wear them inside out as well. But I've put the press studs this way so it would be more difficult to actually put on if they were inside out. But I used some leftover fabric that I had from a top that I'd made. And I think I'd bought a metre and a half. And it was enough to make a three-quarter length sleeve top, which was the Concord t-shirt by Cashmirette. And then I've got the dandelion dungarees for Jensen. Do you like them, Jensen? <laughs> <laughs> he looks a bit sleepy at the moment. We've just been for a walk. Um, but there we go. Thank you very much, Jensen. Are you going to say bye-bye to everybody? Or just yawn at them? <laughs> <laughs> bye! So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye! <laughs>